Hi everyone. I have written a story for you today. It was a really difficult story to write. It is not the genre that I prefer. It is, if you will, a horror genre. Uh, it's not my favorite genre. I don't like horror. I don't read horror stories or watch horror films. I used to years ago, but I just don't like them. However, that is the genre of this story that has been written, which is the next chapter in my novel, The Bifurcated Village. If you do not like emotional, shocking and disturbing stories, then I would suggest you turn this video off now. If you are open to moving into the experience of such a story, then I shall read that for you right now. Okay. Right. Right, where are you story? Here we go. So this story is called The Facility, a horror story. And the title of the story is As Long As I Have My Teddy Bear. So now I shall begin. On this one day in April, it was the 18th, early morning into the 19th. The Oracle Grandmother called Gloria Love to her cave. She had seen how psychic and empathic Gloria had become and that Gloria had the ability to observe from the neutral perspective. Therefore, Mother felt she was ready for some tough astral work. When mother told Gloria what she wanted her to do, Gloria was dead against it. Please don't make me do this, mother. I don't want to. Choose someone else. I choose you, mother replied. And she reassured her she would be protected every step of the way. Sometimes this work is not pleasant, Gloria, but it must be done and it is your destiny. Did you think spiritual awakening and clairvoyant insight was all about rainbow skies, crystal caves and twin flames? Gloria said the best she could do would be to send her love and blessings to any other astral traveler undertaking this work, but she did not want to do it. Mother could see Gloria was in resistance to this and knew that was a ticket into the very astral journey she wanted to avoid. Fair enough, Mother said. Why don't you just lie down anyway? We will do some trance type astral projection, sacred journeying, and just go with the flow, yes? Gloria agreed, and she took a sip of the grandmother's divine nectar, lay down on the brown fur bed, and closed her eyes. After a while, mother said, describe to me what you see, child. Where are you? I'm in a room, replied Gloria quite sleepily. What can you see, mother asked. There is a huge fish tank filled with fish, a double bed, there's a little girl, she's around three or four years old, clutching a teddy bear. What is she doing, this little girl? Why is she in the room with you? There was a long pause before Gloria replied. She wants me to follow her. How do you feel about that, asked mother. I, I don't want to go but I feel I need to protect the little girl. She's very vulnerable. I don't think she should go alone. So I'm going to follow her. Tell me, says mother, tell me your story, Gloria. What happens when you follow the little girl? Gloria takes a deep breath and begins to tell her story of her astral travel dreamtime experience. I am walking behind the little girl. We come to a wrought iron staircase. The little girl walks in front of me and I follow her up the staircase. I'm some kind of carer or nurse 
or foster parent to this little girl, and I love her very much. I am aware that I must not let the others know that I love her. I can't show that emotion. I must keep it hidden. I'm carrying two bags of sweets, so I cannot help the little girl up the stairs and she stumbles. I decide in that moment whether or not to drop the bags of sweets and help her or let her get herself up. She clings tightly to that teddy bear. She never lets that teddy bear go. Just as I decide to drop the bags, knowing I'll be in trouble for doing that, one of the men appears at the top of the stairs and lifts the child up and I follow. Well done for bringing her back, he says. What did she say? Nothing, I reply. She was mute the entire time, except for saying she wanted to go back home. Good girl, the man says to the child. He picks her up and carries her into the nursery. I still have the bags of sweets, thank goodness. I am now the child. I'm no longer the nurse, carer, parent figure. I am back home. Now I'm safe. Leaving was frightening, and I knew I wouldn't be safe until I was back home. Even though the nurses and the doctors and the nice police lady said I was safe now, I knew that wasn't true. I need to be back home. Only at home would I be safe. I have my teddy. Thank goodness they never take my teddy off me. Everyone is welcoming me home, but all the nurses are asking me where I went and what questions the people asked me. But I can't think and I can't say anything. I go into the little tent and sit in the corner with the other children. Lots of us always sit in the corner. After a little while, the music plays and we all run to the window to see the sky. There are cartoons in the sky and they dance and wave and sing to us. We like the music and we like the cartoons in the sky. The big screens tell us what we're having for dinner. The food looks so delicious and we all look forward to the dinner and the yummy chocolate pudding and ice cream after, but we're only allowed to have it if we've been good. I try to be a good girl all the time, but really I'm a bad girl because I'm always getting into trouble for doing naughty things, but I don't know what the naughty things are that I've done. One nurse always looks after me though. She always tells me what to do so I don't end up getting in trouble and I do listen to her. When the food comes that's been on the big screen, we're so hungry and we're so looking forward to it, but some of the children don't eat anything. They're sad like me, but I don't know why. I don't know why they're sad and I don't know why I'm sad. Sometimes the food is just what the big screen says it will be, but sometimes it looks nice food but when we eat it, it's horrible and it makes us all sick. And then we all get told off for being sick. I get afraid when we're told off. But then I don't mind because all I know is fear. It's familiar to me. And having the familiar is the most important thing. As long as I have my teddy, everything will be all right. I look over at the boy at the window He's my friend. We don't talk to each other. We just sit next to each other, but I know he's my friend. Now I'm the little boy at the window. I'm no longer the little girl with the teddy. I'm about six years old, maybe seven. I hold a constant feeling of unease. I don't know how long I've felt this unease or why I feel it, but Something doesn't feel right. I've been in this nursery for as long as I can remember. Some of the children leave when they get a bit older, but I don't know where they go. Every so often, some of the children get to be lucky winners. I don't know why or what they even did to be a lucky winner, but usually two children are chosen. 
They're usually boys, but not always. One day, two of my friends were chosen to be lucky winners. Other nurses and the head nurse came to get them and I followed. They didn't know I was there. I'm good at hiding and following. They gave both boys some kind of medicine and one boy almost fell asleep. The other boy was drowsy, but he was awake. And they were told again and again that they were lucky winners. They were taken into a room and I followed and I saw that they were laid on a bed together. Then one of the nurses saw me and she said, go back to the nursery. You're not a lucky winner and you will get told off if you're caught here. So I hid in the corridor and I waited. And eventually I saw two men walk towards the room where the lucky winners were. I'm Gloria now. I was inside the boy. I'm still inside the boy. The people here, they, they can't see me. They can't sense that I'm inside him. The two men I saw, they both liked little boys. The energy of evil was strong with them both. Although they were not fully polarized as service to self, they were on that path. I'm the boy again now. I don't know why the men went into the room or what happens when you're a lucky winner. Being a lucky winner is a good thing, we are told. I'm curious to know what happens when you're a lucky winner, but I also feel fear and unease about it and I don't know why. Sometimes when the boys come back from being a lucky winner, they're fine, but most of the time they're hurt. They have bruises and burns and sometimes broken bones. One time a boy had broken his neck and his spine. The boys don't remember what happened to them. They're just told that they've been in an accident. When I asked one of the nurses, she said being a lucky winner means sometimes you can get hurt. And she told me not to ever ask anyone that question again, so I didn't. Then it came time that we were all being prepared to leave the nursery. A whole group of us, it was like we were being saved or rescued or something. I don't really know. These new nurses that I haven't seen before, they came along with some men and we had to say goodbye to all the nurses we had known since forever. We walked down long corridors, through doors, up staircases. We went on a lift. We went so far away that we were sure we were leaving this place and we were all excited to see where we were going. I'm Gloria now and I'm wondering what is happening here? Is this a white hat rescue? Then I see a door and the boy walks in and I'm still in the boy's body and there are lots of children in this much bigger room. And I realise this is just another part of the facility and not a rescue at all. I go back into the boy. I am the boy now. I'm in a room full of children, much older children than me. I'm one of the youngest. It's like a big schoolroom. I'm told that this is my home now. There's a serving hatch with food and the children are queuing up to be served their dinner. Some of the children are quite shy like me and others are really confident. I am Gloria and the boy simultaneously now. I see all through my eyes as Gloria and my eyes as the boy. Some men come in the room. Some are dressed in suits or normal clothes and others wear long black robes. Some men are alone and some have a young companion. The companions are usually boys around 12 years old. These companions are carefully chosen. They are the confident children and they wanted to be companions. A companion is not the same as a lucky winner. 
the companion has special privileges and is exclusively with their one companion only. They believe this is what they want. The companions help to keep the other children in check and teach them how to be. There are some women too that have companions and who appear to be in a senior position, but not many, they are mostly men. Then suddenly, one man walks into the room. Everyone bows their head. He wears a long black robe. This man is Papa and everyone loves him. The more confident children simply live to see Papa. They adore him. Some of the fearful children like me are so scared that they wet themselves at the sight of him. Papa does not look at the children. He does not address them directly, but he will hold out his hand to a few chosen children. It's always the confident ones he holds his hand out to, and then they are allowed to kiss his hand. This is the highest accolade afforded the children, to kiss Papa's hand. The children who do this are ecstatically happy. They know that there's a chance that the children who got to kiss Papa's hand will become a companion someday. As Gloria, I take a quick chance to empathically read Papa. I know I must stay fully merged with the boy. I cannot risk being seen. I do stay fully merged and Papa does not know I am there. All I can explain him as is pure evil incarnate. His presence fills the room, not with charisma or talent or beauty, but with palpable darkness. He reminds me of a vampire, but not the romanticized versions you read in novels or see on the television. Reptilian does not describe him. Dark master, perhaps, but even that is not enough. There are no words. The total and polar opposite of all that is good and all that is God in one man one human, for he is human. I realise then that I've never seen a fully polarised service to self being until now. All the state that is deep figures in the political arena here in the village do not come close. The characters in children's stories like Uncle Abanaza in Aladdin, known as Jafar in the Disney film, they are modelled on this type of man. Is he the only papa or are there many papas? I don't know at this point. All I know is I had intellectualised and even psychically seen a shadow aspect to these beings, but I had never seen one this up close and personal. No one ever gets to see papa. No psychic or remote viewer or dreamer or astral traveller gets near Papa. But it seems a gateway or portal was opened and somehow I found a way in. Through resistance to never wanting to do this work. Count me out, I said. It's not for me. Let others do this. And here I am standing in front of the darkest, most evil, service to self human being I have ever seen. I am still merged with the boy and he doesn't see me. Papa, he doesn't see me. He never knows I'm there. As he walks past each person, child or adult alike, no matter what rank or level they hold, they do this strange salute. They thump the left side of their chest twice with their right hand made into a fist and then they hold their arm out straight in front of them at a slight tipped angle. They all do it, 
So I, as the boy, do the same. He does not hold his hand out to me as the boy. The difference between the quiet, shy children full of fear and the confident ones who are excited at the sight of Papa and they love him and are so loyal to him that they would willingly die for him is very obvious. That difference between these children, it's very obvious. And I, as Gloria, I decide that this is noteworthy. Then I leave the boy and I leave that room and I'm back as the nurse carer parent who loves the little girl. I'm her now, the nurse carer parent. I was the one who sneaked the girl out, trying to save her, but they found her and they got her back. They're in the system, so any rescued child just bounces back. Would she even survive leaving? She was so traumatized being away, her programming was absolute. I prepare now to withdraw from this projection, but not before a higher council of light beings speak to me. They say they are the Pleiadian council of, of nine. I haven't seen this group before, but they seem familiar characters in this story. And they say to me, we present to you this story for you to share with those who will listen. We wish to show you here the depth, complexity and convoluted multi-layered expression that this picture holds. For many of you pray and send your energy and say, when will this operation be complete? When will this be done? When will the world know of all this? And we show you that this is not a quick fix as many of you may think. We show you through Gloria Love, the depths and the layers of this. We show you and we cloak, double cloak, triple cloak, and yet further still do cloak through dreams within dreams and stories within stories. Yet the message shall reach those that it is meant to reach. We are the Pleiadian Council of Nine. With that, Gloria opened her eyes and looked at Mother. The very work you wished me to undertake, that I did not wish to be a part of. It happened to me. I was there. I was the child. I saw things, I heard things. Yes, child, I know. Your resistance was the final key needed to take you in. A portal was opened and you are a vibrational match with the training needed in invisibility and stealth. You were not the only one who took part in this mission, which is in various ways occurring across all the villages. This is Operation Light Force for Gaia, and it is time now. The old structure is crumbling, but you must have patience. You must hold stamina. Slow and steady, the tortoise wins the race. Thank you, Mother. Gloria held her hands together in the prayer position and bowed her head to the grandmother. It struck her how mother commanded such respect and reverence, just like Papa. And she was mother and he was Papa. Yet more different they could not be. Gloria's brother, Lai Ram of the North Woods, was waiting for her at the mouth of the crystal cave. Brother! What brings you here? Gloria asked. I must tell you, sister, of a dream I had last night moving into this morning. A dream so dark, so sinister and so real that I can barely speak of it. I was a child in the dream. So her brother too had been called. Come, let us talk, she said. And together they walked into the woods beyond to sit by the stream 
and await the blue unicorn. They could soak up the ethereal vibrations of the blue flame light that the unicorn carried in his aura. For surely they now needed to go through the processing and healing after both experiencing the sinister service to self landscape of astral dream time. There shall be more adventures with Gloria, Lai Ram, the grandmother, and all the other characters in the bifurcated village. But that, as they say, is another story. Love and blessings. Magenta P. So before I go, I would just like to say that this story is a fictional story and any relation or connection to individuals, events or places, individuals either living or dead, is purely clairvoyance. I mean coincidence. Thank you so much for listening. And I will be back with more videos. Take care, much love, bye.